If you find one bad read in a box of 10, that's normal. If you find two or three bad reads, you're maybe a bit unlucky. But if you consistently find 12 bad reads in a box of 10, the chances are you're a garbage player or you lack a good strategy. So let's dive in and cover the three pillars of good reads. The single biggest improvement you can make to your reads is to start conditioning your reads. Now conditioning is just a fancy term rather than breaking in, but given that we're dealing with a small acoustic driver of sound and not a wild horse or leather goods, we're gonna use the term conditioning. And there are huge benefits to conditioning your reads. They're gonna be more stable, they're gonna play more consistently, they'll play better, and most importantly probably, they last longer. If you're a high school level player or above, I'm gonna recommend you start breaking in 10 reads at a time. So open the box and you're gonna dunk all the reeds in water for just a few minutes. And if you play Van Doren reeds, you're gonna to need to open up 10 little flow packs and welcome each reed to its new home. Bonjour, welcome to America. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, Dr. Wally, what kind of water should I be using? Should I use filtered, distilled, or ionized water? Don't be stupid, it's just water, it doesn't matter. And it's the cleanest thing your reeds will be touching for a very long time, so don't overthink it. Tap water will be fine. So after your reeds have soaked for a minute or two, pull each reed out and play each reed for one minute. And given my public school math skills, I think that would take about 10 minutes to break in a box of 10 reeds. And then put them away and go back to playing on your old crappy reeds. Day two, you're gonna play each reed for two minutes. Day three, you play each reed in the box for three minutes. Day four, wait for it, that's right, four minutes. And on day five, you're gonna be playing each read for five minutes, which will take about 50 minutes for the box and eat up the bulk of a practice session. So you can actually practice your scales and whatever you're working on. Set a timer so you don't forget. I have zoned out and played on one read for way too long. And by the end of the fifth day, you're gonna have a very good idea whether the read is great, playable, performance worthy, or if it's ready for uh, termination. And in all honesty, since I've started conditioning my reads, it's not uncommon for me to get 10 perfectly serviceable reads out of a box of 10, with four or five being performance worthy. It really is a game changer, so start conditioning your reads. Pillar number two, storage. So assuming you've conditioned your reads and they're playing well, it's imperative that we start storing them properly. Now there's a couple of schools of thoughts on this. There are some players that like to store their reeds wet. They stick them in some kind of solution of filtered water with mouthwash or some kind of strange liquid. But given that your reeds are not a fetal pig, I would recommend not storing them in jars of stuff. Other players insist on keeping their reeds in a humidity controlled environment. They use a Van Doren Hydro case, the Daddario packs with the little wet nap control. And some players actually buy a humidor for cigars, specifically to keep their reeds at a constant humidity. Now the thinking is by keeping our reeds constant and never fully drying out, uh, they don't warp as much and they tend to last longer and play more consistently. My personal experience, and this just is just my personal opinion, I prefer to let my reeds dry out completely. I've experimented for years with both systems and I find when my reeds dry out, they last about as long, but more importantly, they retain color and vibrancy for a little bit longer. Whenever I've used a humidity control situation, they play very well, but they kind of adopt a dull sheen after a couple days. Your mileage may vary. Give it a try and see what you think. My personal solution is just an old fashioned reed case. I really like the Protex. They're cheap, durable, and they come in a variety of fun colors. So you can tell the world, yeah, I'm a pro, but <laughs> I'm a real card. The third key to good reads is rotation. I try to never play on a single read for more than an hour without swapping it out and choosing another one. And after I play a read, I like to give it some time off. It deserves a little vacation. I try to give it 24, 48 hours to dry out and let it rest. And there's a couple of big benefits to rotation. Number one, your reads will all last longer. They'll also be more consistent and you won't play one good read into the ground. And that's a dangerous thing, because as your reed gets softer and softer, your embouchure gets lazy and deconditioned. Then when it comes time to break in a new reed, it feels like a two by four. This will prevent that. We're gonna cover reed adjustment, some reed adjustment tools, and some of my favorite reed cases in a future episode. So please do hit the subscribe button, give us a like, and let me know in the comments, how do you keep your reeds playing well? <laughs>